Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Illinois, believe it or not, I actually have some good news for you for once. Now, I don't know how long this good news is going to last, but it is certainly worth celebrating. And sometimes you got to take what little victories you can get when you can get them. Now, as we know, this state of Illinois has gone on a complete rampage on its citizen Second Amendment rights, banning all assault weapons and high-capacity magazines in the stroke of a pen overnight because the gun violence problem was so out of hand and it had nothing to do with any of their soft-on-crime policies. Of course, that had many people in the state of Illinois pretty freaked out, and the lawsuits started flying right away. Well, apparently, one of them has begun to gain some traction already. So today, let's spend a few minutes and get all you folks up to speed on when your governor gets rejected by the courts. Okay, so the topic that we're going to be talking about yet again today is the state of Illinois' amazing and rapid banning of millions and millions of firearms from hundreds of thousands of lawful and responsible Illinois residents in the stroke of a pen. And as we know, the uh, Illinois assault weapon ban has now been the subject of several lawsuits. We're beginning to see some of the big hitters coming into this. Firearms Policy Coalition, Gun Owners of America, Second Amendment Foundation, and so forth. Now, one of the suits was brought by Thomas DeVore, who I understand was the Republican candidate or a Republican candidate for state attorney general. Um, he and several hundred plaintiffs did bring suit in Effingham County. Um, and in that suit, they brought a motion for what's called a temporary injunction. They sometimes in some states are called restraining orders. They all basically do the same thing. What is a temporary injunction? A temporary injunction takes the implementation of the law and the court says, nope, we're going to pause it right now. And that law cannot be enforced. Now, there can be limitations to that injunction. We're going to talk about that. But the good news is this. And this is really good news because the Honorable Joshua Morrison in Effingham County has in fact granted an injunction to this law. Hallelujah, right? That means all of you still get to live free like Americans today, right? Wrong, not so fast. Actually, this injunction is limited to all of the plaintiffs in the case. Now, I understand there was somewhere around 800 plaintiffs. So for Mr. DeVore, the lead plaintiff on this, congratulations, you got a really, really strong following there. Uh, and so for those individuals named in the lawsuit, this law does not apply. Unfortunately for all of you other folks in Illinois, this law still does apply now. Now, here's why this is big news, okay? It's not that this injunction has happened because candidly, we know the state of Illinois is going to appeal this to a higher court. They've already said so. As a matter of fact, the Illinois Attorney General, uh, Kwame Raoul, is quoted as saying, we will file a notice of appeal and we'll ask the appellate court to reverse and vacate the temporary restraining order. So, and that does not surprise me. And what you see happen here is the political forum shopping now. Oh, this judge has a tendency to lean this way. Let's get it up to this court. We get the judge leans that way. And you'll begin to see it. And we see this in New York and also with the uh, injunctions on the Concealed Carry Improvement Act. This on again, off again approach as these things ricochet up to the higher courts. But here is why a granting of a temporary injunction can be really, really important. And if you're looking into the tea leaves, this can be a very positive development. Because to, in order for any court to enjoin a state from enforcing a law, from saying, we are not going to allow you to enforce the law against these people, and in some instances, it's against everybody, depending on the terms of that injunction, okay? But there's a two-part test that the court needs to find, okay? The first part is that the plaintiffs are going to suffer irreparable harm. That is, they're going to be harmed by the enforcement of this law. And if we don't stop the enforcement of the law, they will be harmed to such a degree that they cannot be made whole again. That is irreparable harm. That is important, okay? And so sometimes you'll get these challenges as to standing. Does this person really have irreparable harm? Or are they just pissed off that they don't like this law? And that's a very valid argument that is made in some instances. Okay, but in addition to the irreparable harm, Illinois, and this is what's huge, is the plaintiffs also have to show that they are uh, likely 
to prevail on the merits of the argument. So not only must they show that they're going to be hurt by it, but they also must show that they got a really good legal argument, one that is likely to succeed. And then and only then does a court grant a temporary injunction. So the good news, Illinois, at least if other judges view the law as Judge Morrison does, is that they are saying that there is a great likelihood of prevailing. And I think that the judge down there in Effingham County actually got it right because he is quoted as saying in the order, this legislation has used criteria to choose who and who cannot possess weapons without due consideration. And the judge also said, and I want you to pay attention to this, Additionally, due to the speed with which this bill was passed, the effect to protected classes could not have been considered, nor could the legislature have studied if this was the least restrictive way to meet their goal. And certainly the lightning speed at which this legislation moved, was signed, and enacted into law had all of our heads spinning in the 2A community, and it really did not put any Illinois resident on fair notice. Now, as I mentioned, the Illinois Attorney General, always going to be a sore loser, is going to immediately appeal this to a higher court. That higher court may lift that injunction. What does it mean to you? If you're not named in this lawsuit, it doesn't mean anything for you other than you need to watch this because this is going to tell you what is or is not going to happen to your rights. If you happen to be one of the 800 named plaintiffs and you're watching this channel, thank you very much. But yeah, if this injunction remains in place, you do get to live free as free as a person in Illinois can. Uh, but if the injunction is lifted or stayed, the injunction is stayed, so basically you're unpausing the pause at that point, then no, you're going to be subjected to this law as well. Now, there's a lot of question about how is this law going to be challenged or how many different angles is this law going to be challenged. And there are many, many angles Illinois, now that you're getting all up to speed on this, there are many, many angles under which you can come at gun control legislation. The most common, of course, being the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution. Now, sometimes, Washington State, for example, our state constitution provides incredibly protective language, in fact, arguably more protective than its federal counterpart. Illinois, I had an opportunity to read your state constitution, Article 1, Section 22, and I am sorry to report that the language contained in your equivalent, your state equivalent of a Second Amendment, is not particularly encouraging, okay? The language of that state constitutional amendment reads, Subject only to the police power, the right of the individual citizen to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And so we see right here a condition precedent to apparently the rights that Illinois citizens enjoy which is subject to police power. Now, it, what you are seeing here in a very tyrannical sense is what happens when police power is left unchecked, but I digress. So the bottom line, Illinois, is, is you've been itching for some good news. This is a ray of hope. This is a little bit of good news. Now, I'm sure there will be a, an appeal as early as next week, and we promise to get you up to speed on that. In the meantime, if you have any questions about this or what's left of your Second Amendment rights, you guys know the drill. You can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com, or you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, in the meantime, let's remember... Part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe. <laughs>